Instead of a computer, do you have a big bucket? Do you want to increase FPS and go to your favorite streets of Tarkov? Finally, complete quests there. Or do you just want more FPS for a comfortable gaming experience? Let's see what can be done. Let's start with a program that theoretically can boost our FPS. But the main question, at what cost? I learned about it from this guy, and I was really curious about how effective it could be. And overall, is it worth recommending? It's called Lossless Scaling and is sold on Steam for 6 euros. To use it, switch your game to Windows mode, open the program, and I'll immediately say that I didn't notice a real increase in sharpness when adjusting this slider. In the scaling type window, there are many options and I didn't notice much difference in many of them, so I left the default LS1. On the right side, there is frame generation. Activate it, then scroll down and enable FPS. In the setting tab, you can see the key combination to activate the program in the game. I went out on the streets of Taco and set the game settings high enough to lower my FPS. In the end, on the right, we see real in game FPS, and on the left, what the program added. I must say, I feel input lag. It's there. Another peculiar feature is that we seem to get a double image of the side when we start moving it quickly. But I'll give you credit that if you turn off this program, you immediately feel two contrasts. First, input lag disappears, and second, FPS really lower. If anything, input lag is something like the response rate, how quickly the game listens to you when you interact with it. I also saw feedback that if you have a low frame rate from the game itself, the program won't help you, but will only make it worse. And on top of everything, the freezes have not gone anywhere. In general, the pros, we have a smoother picture. FPS is indeed higher, playing is more enjoyable. Cons. There is an unpleasant input lag that you can theoretically get used to, because during streams I have about the same input lag. Well, the second minus is these strange frames that are added. They are also clearly visible when switching inside the game menu. The program clearly won't suit everyone, but in any case I recommend trying it. Maybe you'll like it. But what can really affect your FPS is game settings. Let's take a close look at them. But of course, I won't forget to remind you to subscribe to the channel. It's very important. If possible, screen mode set it to full screen. This may slightly increase FPS. Texture quality affects the smoothness of textures. Surprisingly, it greatly affects your computer's load. Therefore, the weaker the computer, the lower you should set it. I play on low. Shadow quality has a feature. Low loads the processor more. Medium the graphics card. Given that the game itself already loads the processor more, I recommend setting it to medium. Unless, of course, you don't have a cast tray instead of a video card. Object LOD quality. Responsible for making your bushes look like bushes, not like torn paper. It also affects the rendering distance of PMC. That is conditionally without optics if it's too then you will see PMCs at 200 meters and at 4 at 400 meters. It also heavily loads the computer, so if the processor is weak, set it lower. General visibility, don't set it over a thousand, you don't need it. Smoothing, it's important to have it, otherwise the textures will be torn. It is desirable to set TAA, FXAA loads the computer less, but it worse. And TAA high, there is almost no difference from TAA. Resampling. This is for well-off guys or outright beggars. If you are wild major and have 4090, you can set 2x, 4x and your picture will become better, as if you have a monitor with 2K, 4K resolution. There is also a reverse side, you can decrease resampling, but the game will become very soapy. Do this if instead of a PC you have a cookie with wires. DLSS and AMD FSR. Useful thing. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, use DLSS. For example, without DLSS my maximum FPS was no higher than 135. With DLSS enabled in balance mode, the peak FPS was 139, and when I turn on quality, the high 
highest was 143. If you have AMD, I recommend using FSR 2.2, it's more refined. Even if you have an Nvidia GPU, you can set the preset to quality and then the picture will hardly suffer, but at the same time FPS will be better. HBAO – this is the volume of shadows. Yes, it can really affect the quality of the picture, but it also heavily loads the system, so better turn it off. I turned it off. SSR – this is reflection. That is, you will see those very puddles and everything else. Quite a beautiful thing and doesn't heavily load the computer, so you can turn it on. Anisotropic filtering – various particles on flat surface. Doesn't significantly affect performance, but I don't really see the difference, so I turn it off. Nvidia reflects low latency. Theoretically, reduces response time, but I didn't feel any difference at all. The only reason I can use it is to select on plus boost to remove the FPS limit during the game. Sharpness obviously increases sharpness. High quality color. You can leave it. Just improves colors, doesn't load the computer. The blur. Definitely turn it off. It's blurring in motion. Chromatic aberration. This is also pagan stuff. It creates color distortion at the edges of textures. Like cinematic, but in fact only hinders. Noise? This is noise. In the video about post effects, I already told you how to apply it. Grass shadows. Just forget it. And MIP steaming turn on if you have 16 GB of RAM, or even god for bit less, or a graphic card with not so much video memory. And depending on how good your SSD is, set a higher or lower value. Pros – fewer freezes in general. Cons – Quizzes will last longer. Also, only those textures that you are looking at will be rendered. Texture resolution reduction mode on the streets. This is if you typically run with medium textures but your computer struggles on the streets. Then you check these bugs and enjoy. Let's move to the game tab. Automatic memory cleanup. If you are not using third party programs like MapReduct, I recommend enabling this. Use only physical cores. It's individual so it's better to check how it works for you specifically. Feedback values FOV – this is an individual presetting. It determines your field of view in the game. I use 65. Malfunction notification – definitely turn it on. So when your gun jams, the screen will flash red. Preload hideout – useless stuff, you can leave it untouched. Trading intermediate screen – this is for those who find it more convenient to interact with trade. Here you see three pre-settings. Always hidden. Nothing will be highlighted. Auto-hide. Only when necessary. Meaning, when you are injured and in this moment you will see where. And always shown, which I believe is self-explanatory. Health color scheme can be colored or monochrome. See the difference. Highlight available operations. Turn it on to highlight everything. Very useful. You'll see where you can place or use a particular item when you pick it up. Double click item quick use. I didn't change this setting. I just keep in mind not to double click on the moonshine. Volting over medium obstacles. I don't recommend setting it to automatic. Otherwise, you'll volt when you don't need to. When using post effects, know that the strongest FPS card is from Luma Sharpness and also the second sharpness. Another important point is the swap file. If you have 60 GB of RAM, without it you are unlikely to get into the streets of Tarkov. Almost everyone I recommend setting it to at least 25 GB, preferable on an SSD. And it's preferable if the game is not installed there. But if it's installed there, what can you do? Using a search engine, find sizedm.cpl. In the opened window, go Go to the advanced tab. In the performance window, click on settings. Then advanced, change, uncheck this option, select the disk and specify the swap file, the one you need. If you have 32 GB of RAM, especially DDR5, choose the system managed size. 
It's also crucial to enable the XMP profile. This is done in the BIOS, so I won't show it to you visually. But to understand that it's definitely not enabled, go to Task Manager, the second tab, and look at the frequency of your RAM. If it shows 2133 or 2666, then it means it's off. Enabling it is very simple, but it's done in the BIOS. There are plenty of guys on the internet. Don't worry about safety. Worst case, your computer simply won't start. I've received messages with similar questions. If this happens to you, just pull out the battery on the motherboard with dry hands and then put it back in. The BIOS will be with her. It's also very important to have enough free space on your disks. Otherwise, there will be a sea of freezes. Don't forget to clean temporary files. To do this, press Windows plus R, type percent temp. Percent, a folder will open and delete everything there. Also, clean the cache in the launcher. And clear the logs only if you have already sent all the bugs reports you wanted to Battlestate games. And finally, overclocking your computer may help improve performance. However, it's a very delicate matter, and amateurs may not handle it easier. So, in this regard, I would recommend turning to specialized services or knowledgeable people who can help. In conclusion, if if you have a bucket of nails instead of a computer, nothing will help you. Everything set above can help increase FPS, but it will not replace you with a good processor or RAM. At a minimum, you need 16 GB of RAM, preferably 32 DDR4 with a frequency of at least 3200. Even after optimizing, configuring and so on, if your computer is still lagging, then most likely the problem is with your processor. For Tarkov, a GTX 2060 or 1660 graphic cards is sufficient. Personally, I played on a 6050 Super, though that was about two years ago. This video concludes. Thanks for watching until the end. See you next time. Bye bye.